What's up guys, Parker here. I have an awesome video today showing you how to calculate a previous period's metrics based on the current level of the date hierarchy in your visual. Um, so to give you an example of what I mean here, as you can see on the screen, I have two uh, measures thrown into this line chart right here. The uh, black measure is just my sales. So uh, in the data I'm using, it's just the sum of the sales amount. But you see that the green line is actually that sales value shifted over uh, one period. So it's showing the previous period. So for example, uh, for uh, the third quarter of 2017, you see that my sales was 2,031,000. In the next quarter, so quarter four, you see that the previous period sales is that same 2,031,000. So this is dynamic based on the level of um, the date hierarchy that you are currently drilled into. So if I drill up into the year level, you can see that this works. So for uh, 2018, the previous period sales was 7,040,000. Um, but for 2017, the current value is 7,040,000. So it works on the year level, and then you drill down, it works on the quarter level, and then the month level, and obviously the day level as well, but we'll need to filter that down just to see some things. So you see that it's just one day shifted, um, shifted back. So I'm gonna show you how you can uh, calculate this for yourself. This uses a trick I've already posted on my, uh, on my channel so far, but this kind of adds another uh, level of complexity to it. This also uses the date add uh, DAX function, which is an awesome function. There's a lot of good literature and videos already out on the date add function. Um, but putting this together along with uh, the is in scope function that I've taught you about previously, we can do some really cool things to calculate uh, this previous period metric. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into the demo. I'm gonna open up another file here that only has my sales. Basically right now it has a sales measure thrown in, which as you can see is just some of fact internet sales sales amount. Um, so in order for us to begin, we're going to create another measure. I'm gonna call this uh, hierarchy level. And this is going to uh, allow us to see which level we are at in our hierarchy, uh, just to give us some visual feedback. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna start with the switch function and set it equal to true. So we are going to evaluate for true. And the first thing we're gonna type is is in scope. And is in scope is going to tell us if the current level of our hierarchy is in the current scope. So we can start with uh, the lowest level of our hierarchy, which as you can see on the right is day. So we are going to use is in scope order date dot day. Um, close off the parenthesis comma. And if the day level is in scope, we want to return day. And we're gonna do this a few more times, one for each level of our hierarchy. I'm gonna copy this, paste it three more times. So next, instead of day, we are going to use month and change this to month as well. Uh, instead of day again, we're going to use quarter because that's the next level of our hierarchy and then quarter and check to see if the year is in scope if it is, we return year. Go ahead and click enter. Oh, I'm gonna name this hierarchy level demo because it looks like I already have that measure created. And finally, I have one extra comma at the end. So now when we click enter, should be good. Let's throw in hierarchy level demo into our tooltips. And as we hover, uh, hover over our graph, we should see in the hierarchy, you see hierarchy level demo is year. And as we drill down into the quarter level, let me drill up one more. Okay. As we drill down into the quarter level, you see that the hierarchy level demo is quarter. And then we'll drill down into the month level. The hierarchy demo level is month. And then finally, the hierarchy level is day. So that's working as expected. So we're going to use that functionality in order to specify our calculation uh, basically, if the hierarchy level is day, we're going to want to date add a certain number of days, whereas if the hierarchy level is month, we're going to want to date add a certain number of months. So we're going to just copy this entire code here, 
and create one more measure. This is going to be our final measure. Cop uh, paste that in, and I'm going to call this uh, dynamic previous. Actually, no, I'm going to call it previous period sales since this is a sales measure. And so using the same switch function is in scope order date uh, dot day we are going to throw in actual code here to calculate the sales amount for that previous period. So we're going to start with calculate. I already have a uh, measure called sales, which as you recall is just the sum of my sales amount. You can use that here or you can use sum of sales amount here or any other uh, numeric uh, value, any aggregation. And you're going to type in date add so this is what is actually creating that magic. This is going to allow you to look at the previous period um, for that sales measure. So we're going to use our order date for our date field dot date. And then we're going to use negative one interval. So this is going to look at the previous period as opposed to the next period. And for our interval, uh, since we're on the day level of our hierarchy, we want to use day. Close that off and put a comma at the end. And we're just going to copy this three times for the other levels of the hierarchy again. So instead of where it says month here, we're going to paste that in and change the interval to month. And do the same for quarter. And then finally for year. Highlight it here. Okay, great. And that should be everything we need, except I have that pesky comma at the end. So we should be good now. And as we throw this into the values, we can drill up to start from the year level. And there you go, we have the exact same functionality. Uh, if we drill down into quarter, you see it's really easy to see that the black line or the green line is the previous period's value. So it's showing the black line just one month later since um, the previous period is saying, hey, last month it was this value. So it works on the quarter level, the month level, the day level as well with a smaller date range, much easier to see. One extra little tidbit here. Um, in case you don't want to look at just the previous day, because that may not make sense comparing a uh, Monday to a Sunday as far as your sales go, you can easily come in here and go to our previous period uh, sales measure and change. Instead of negative one days, go to negative, uh, try negative seven. You can leave the months and quarters and years as they are, just you know, looking back one month, quarter, or year. But you can look back seven days if you want to look at the previous Monday, let's say, instead of today's Monday. And then you see it's shifted seven days. You can see these two spikes here match these two spikes here. Um, so yeah, that's a way that you can you know look at it on the week level instead of just the previous day. So that's a pretty cool trick. I hope you got a lot out of this. If you did, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.